Love had songs that reminded him of someone else. Songs love didn't like to listen to. So, so did, did I. I. Oh, oh, man, okay, dang. I've had this poem in my back pocket for a minute. I'm not gonna lie to y'all. I've been seeing it. It's been recommended on my YouTube time and time and time again. I've had people in my comment section even recommend this poem. One Love Arrives by Sarah K and Phil K. They're not married. That's a common misconception. They've even addressed it before. <laughs> but yeah, uh, they are a great tag team duo. Uh, I've known them to be phenomenal poets individually. So I'm really excited to see what they got together. All right, let's get started. I knew exactly what love looked like in seventh grade. Even though I hadn't met love yet, if love had wandered into my homeroom, I would have recognized him at first glance. Love wore a hemp necklace. I would have recognized her at first glance. Love wore a tight French braid. Love played acoustic guitar and knew all my favorite Beatles songs. Love wasn't afraid to ride the bus with me. And, and I, I knew, knew I just must be checking the wrong classrooms. Just must be searching the wrong hallway. She was there. I was sure of it. Okay, one thing I'm going to say is I love how they structured this poem. They begin by reciting the first lines of the poem simultaneously, which kind of indicates that even though they have their own individual experiences with love, they're telling one narrative. Y'all see that? To the point where it's almost like they're finishing each other's sentences, even though Sarah's talking about male love interests starting from the seventh grade, and then Phil is talking about female love interests starting from the seventh grade. The introduction of the poem sets the tone for the rest of the poem. Y'all feel me? Let's keep going. If only I could find him. But, but when, when love, love finally showed, showed up, she had a bowl cut. He wore the same clothes every day for a week. Love hated the bus. Love didn't know anything about the Beatles. Instead, Instead every time I tried to kiss love, our, our teeth, teeth got, got in the way. way. Love became the reason I lied to my parents. I'm going to Ben's house. <laughs> <laughs> relatable, relatable. <laughs> Everything, even from like the teeth getting in the way thing, like, and that's what's crazy. They're being very specific about their encounters with love, right? But a lot of folks can relate to this easily, which is probably why the poem went viral in the first place, you know? Let's keep going. I'm going to Ben's house. Love had terrible rhythm on the dance floor, but made sure we never missed a slow song. Love waited by the phone because she knew if her father picked up, it would be... Hello. <sighs> Hello. Oh, my God. I, I guess they hung up. And love grew. Love stretched like a trampoline. Love changed. Love disappeared slowly, like baby teeth, losing parts of me I thought I needed. Love vanished like an amateur magician. Everyone could see the trap door but me. Like a flat tire. There were other places I had planned on going. But, but my, my plans, plans didn't matter. matter. Love stayed away for years. And when love finally reappeared, I, I barely, barely recognized, recognized him. Her. Love smelled different now, had darker eyes. A broader back. Love came with freckles I didn't recognize. New birthmarks, a softer voice. Now there were new sleeping patterns. New favorite books. Love had songs that reminded him of someone else. Songs love didn't like to listen to. So, so did, did I. I. Oh, oh, man, okay, dang. I'm not even like that crazy into love poems, you know what I'm saying? But this is hidden. This is really hidden, specifically because the tone shift, right? It went from like the lovey-dovey honeymoon feeling you get when you're initially like, you know, when you're young and in love and stuff like that to the reality of, you know, your love interests change over time. Sure enough, because some things just don't work out or maybe the feelings aren't reciprocated. One thing leads to another and you realize they're drastically different from someone you loved prior. And now you're wondering like, wait a minute, is that because I've changed, that my interests have changed? Like, what's going on here? Oh man, it's real crazy out here. I ain't gonna lie. I ain't gonna lie. Now there were new sleeping patterns. New favorite books. Love had songs that reminded him of someone else. Songs love didn't like to listen to. So, so did, did I. I. But we found a park bench that fit us perfectly. 
We found jokes that make us laugh. And now love makes me fresh homemade chocolate chip cookies. But love will probably finish most of them for a midnight snack. Love looks great in lingerie, but still likes to wear her retainer. Love is a terrible driver, but a great navigator. Love knows where she's going. It just might take her two hours longer than she planned. Love is messier now. Not as simple. Love uses the word boobs in front of my parents. Love chews too loudly. Love leaves the cap off the toothpaste. Love uses smiley faces in her text messages. Okay, one thing I'll say before we continue. I feel like they're going to bring up a plot twist of like, this person standing next to me reciting poems, this is not love. Like, this is not my love interest that I'm talking about right now. You feel me? Um, unless the crowd is aware that Sarah Kay and Phil Kay are, in fact, not married. You know what I mean? Uh, they might be privy to that information like I am, right? But if that is the plot twist coming up, I'm a G for predicting it, all right? Gang, gang. <laughs> but yeah, this is going pretty hard. I love how they're finishing each other's sentences so well even though they're talking about two different people, that honestly goes to show that even though our experiences are unique, love is love. You feel me? So, yeah. Love leaves the cap off the toothpaste. Love uses smiley faces in her text messages. And turns out, love, love sh Shocker. But love also cries. And love will tell you you are beautiful. And mean it. Over and over again. You are beautiful. When you just wake up. You are beautiful. When you've just been crying. You are beautiful. When you don't want to hear it. You are beautiful. When you don't believe it. You are beautiful. When nobody else will tell you. You are beautiful. Love still thinks. You are beautiful. But love is not perfect. And will sometimes forget. When you need to hear it most. You, you are beautiful. beautiful. Do not forget this. Love is not who you were expecting. Love is not what you can predict. Maybe love is in New York City, already asleep. You are in California, India, Australia, wide awake. Maybe love is always in the wrong time zone. Maybe love is not ready for you. Maybe you are not ready for love. Maybe love just isn't the marrying type. Maybe the next time you see love is 20 years after the divorce. Love looks older now, but just as beautiful as you remember. Maybe love is only there for one month. Maybe love is there for every firework, every birthday party, every hospital visit. Maybe love stays. Maybe love can't. Maybe, Maybe love, love shouldn't. Should. Okay, okay, before we continue. To think there were two tone shifts, that's not very often you experience two tone shifts in a spoken word poem, unless it's like super duper long. And I guess this is a bit on the long side. It's like four and a half minutes, but still, that that definitely caught me off guard. And the second tone shift was a lot heavier than the first one, because notice how Phil kind of turns away from the mic and Sarah faces Phil like she knew what they were about to address was a touchy subject for him. You feel me? Like a lot was conveyed without words. I think there's a saying that says something like 70% of communication is nonverbal. That's an example, all right? Make sure to utilize that in your spoken word poetry. It's not just the words you speak, but the words you don't. It's not just about the verbiage you utilize, but the pauses between them. That goes a long way in conveying new things, for sure. And then also facial expressions, of course. All right, let's keep going. Maybe love is only there for one month. Maybe love is there for every firework, every birthday party, every hospital visit. Maybe love stays. Maybe love can't. Maybe, Maybe love, love shouldn't. shouldn't. Love arrives exactly when love is supposed to. And love leaves exactly when love must. When love arrives, say, welcome. welcome. Make, Make yourself, yourself comfortable. comfortable. If love leaves, ask her to leave the door open behind her. Turn off the music. Listen to the quiet. Whisper. Thank, Thank you for stopping, stopping by. This poem hit crazy, ah oh, man. See, this is what I'm talking about when I tell people it's all right to use love poems in spoken word, right? However, just don't be cliche about it. This was far from cliche. I've never seen a scheme like this, a setup. You know what I mean? I, I don't really often see team love poems except between like husband and wife, boyfriend and girlfriend. You know what I mean? This was a team poem that was not between lovers. So that in and of itself was not cliche. When you add on top of it, the fact that they were telling two different experiences, but combined it to form one narrative. 
That is a wild structure to me. The overall message of what they were trying to convey was incomplete independently, but dependently created one unique message. Okay, I'm sounding redundant here, but hopefully you get what I'm saying, right? So that was really cool. Um, the facial expressions were nice. There wasn't anything crazy about the choreography. They weren't doing anything like out of the ordinary. But yeah, with their faces, they were, com they were conveying a lot, 100%. They didn't go super crazy with the images and stuff like that. The illustrations that they depicted were very simple, but sweet, you know what I mean? And a lot of times poets will think to themselves that they have to come up with the craziest metaphors, the craziest illustrations in order to really capture somebody. But sometimes relatability will go a long way. You know what I mean? And this is a perfect example of that. Yeah. So this was awesome. I really enjoyed this. I hope you did too. And that's about it. Make sure to check out some of my spoken word poems. Check out my other reactions as well. Check out my analyses. You'll definitely enjoy those. I guarantee you, you will. All right. And with that, I'm out. Deuces.